Hello everyone and welcome back to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today we're going to do our third episode of Dire Wild. Now I had said in the last video I was going to wait to see if I had done anything wrong before jumping back in. I don't have enough time. <laughs> Just has to do with when I can record. I'm actually recording this on the same day. So if there's anything that was substantially wrong in the last playthrough that I missed, I'll be putting it in the subtitles right here. So you're going to be seeing it come out. Make sure to turn on your Klingon subtitles because that will be where I place my goofs. All right, let's get started. We don't have to move anybody's counters because everybody is already at zero. So we'll go ahead and flip an enemy AI card. Karn's going to move for movement and no worries about the fatal wounds yet. Karn will take that step. And I don't know, part of me kind of wants him to come out this round so we can maybe hit him once or twice. And part of me says, eh, let's just deal with him in the third chapter. We'll see. With four movement, the lorry will just move adjacent to Luna. And then this blue minion, one, two, three, four, which we still don't even know what it is, will just move to here. We're definitely going to keep Vale as first player just because of his special ability. Vale will go ahead and draw five cards. We've got three here. Oh man, two puppies and a flea. What is it? The Fellwood Frog. And so we get two more from our discard pile. Oh, we got a puppy and a salamander. That's a terrible hand. <laughs> Over here, one, two, three, four, five for Luna. We have kittens, kittens, puppies, and one gear bug. For Vale, the only thing we can really do is use our kiln salamander to go ahead and distract the lorry by one, which will be nice. The frog, we don't have any insects in our discard pile. And then three puppies. And we only have two charm. The distraction, though, is nice. That means Lori is technically hittable. For Luna's turn, I think we're going to use her other two active magic. And we're going to allow her to destroy a kitten from her discard pile and allow her to draw another card. Oh, we've got our Ojin Penguin. We'll then go ahead and play our gear bug, and that will allow Vale to discard his puppy, and he will draw another card, and he gets a kitten instead. <laughs> That's wonderful. Okay, at least he has three charm instead of two. Then we'll go ahead and play our uh, Ojdin Penguin. We'll discard this kitten to go ahead and draw another card. Nice, we have our Legion Wasp. But unfortunately, we just don't have a lot of other great cards in our hand. We have a total of four charm this round. I think we're also going to play our Scroll of Destruction, and we're going to destroy one puppy and one t kitten in Luna's discard pile. That way, we can get rid of some of those basic cards. For Vale's turn, with three charm, I think we're going to go ahead and spend two of them to get rid of these last two locks. Now we get to roll a D6 instead of a D3 during battle. <laughs> okay, that's nice. Our third step is we're going to go ahead and burn this Hui Patui. And let's go ahead and put out this Fenton Ostrich. Because this ostrich actually isn't terrible. And we'll reveal the next card. We've got another Toten Jackalope. For Luna, I think we're actually going to buy this ostrich. It costs us one, and we're going to spend one more to put it on top of our deck. So that's two. Then we're going to put this Hirgon Stag here. Then we're going to look at the upgraded uh, uh, advanced creature card. Oh, yes. Look at that. It's a reptile. So, okay, that was only two money. We have a total of four, so I think I'm going to burn this stag for um, uh, charm number three. Put out the Komodo dragon. Let's see what this is. Oh, it's another raptor. Then I think we're going to get rid of this fog mount parrot, and we're going to put that raptor out right here. What's our next one? Ooh, the Arcadian tiger. Well, our creatures are looking kind of wimpy this round. <laughs> we have a Hyper Wild Leaping Kiln Salamander and an Awkward Cyborg Wild Legion Wasp. This Salamander only attacks for 2, 3, 4, 5, and this Legion Wasp attacks for 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we do get to roll a D6 instead of only a D3. If I had Luna attack and she rolled a 4, 5, or a 6, she'd actually hit the Lori. So the question is, do we want to try and do that? Or we could potentially use Vale's magic to have her run away and grab a treasure. I kind of think that's good for this round, and next round we maybe go ahead and try and attack. For Vale's turn, I think we're going to go one, two, three, just kind of getting himself closer to the fray. And then we'll spend his final remaining active magic so that Luna can disengage for free. Luna will then be able to move one, two, three, and pick up that treasure. Let's see what we get. We have 
another ketchup potion. Ooh. Okay, so last time we used that on Luna. Let's go ahead and use that on Vale right now. We'll destroy that, and let's get him that Komodo dragon. Look at this guy. Attacks for three with two poison and one pushback, and gives two money. <laughs> and of course, Vale says, thank you, thank you, thank you. Neither player attacks, so at the end of the round, we're going to go ahead and have Luna place the Legion Wasp back on top of her deck. Just because we know she's got a lot of insects, and maybe she can find a way to power it up. We're also going to place this Arcadian Tiger out, and we'll reveal the next card, and we have a Sawtooth Gator. Yes. We'll go ahead and end the round. We've discarded our cards. We'll move counters and start the next round. For moving counters this round, we only have Lori moving up to zero. Now she's indestructible again. Ugh. We'll go ahead and flip our next AI card. Oh, no, Vale, you had to be so loud. <laughs> you guys, I don't know if we're going to get to Chapter 2. First thing that happens, Karn's going to move. We're going to have the minion level four wake up. They're both going to move three spaces. And look at this. Karn, yeah, two more rounds. He's out on the board. Our level four minion, which only needs a 14 attack, really, is a Vire. A uh, Varier? Yeah, I think that's how you say it. Oh, it's only a 13. Oh, plus a D6. <laughs> I was thinking, oh, wow, it's easier. Nope, no, it's not. Okay, what does it say? Uh, Varier rolls a D6 after the hero rolls and adds that result to its attack. Great. And it is a four push. When damaged, all heroes with damage on Varier takes a wound. Wow. Still only three health, but <laughs> wow, you guys, this is going to be fun. Three movement, the lorry is going to go ahead and move right to here. Now, the nice thing is Vire, one, two, three, will actually be able to get adjacent. I didn't think he would, but yeah, he's going to. Well, we're out of magic. We're almost out of treasures. <laughs> I think let's go ahead and make Luna first player this round because Vale right now is engaged with two minions. You can only attack one at a time. That means even if he succeeds at attacking one, he will take a fatal wound from the other. Luna will draw first this time. She has, oh, look at that, a Legion Wasp, the Ostrich, and the Dragonfly. That's three. She'll take her deck. She also has the Ajin Penguin and a Rock Scorpion. <laughs> okay, what does Vale have? One, two, three, four, five. He got rid of a lot of his bad cards before. He does still have a Kitten. Oh, yeah, but look at this Blightwood Basilisk. I don't know. We're going to be a, a, at least dangerous. So I think the first thing we're going to do for Luna, we're going to play the Fenton Ostrich. Now, we could move one space, ignoring any disengage penalty. That would be wonderful if I could give that to Vale, but I can't. And I think I'm going to stay where I am because I'm in range to hit the Lori, if possible. Oh, man, I've got to make sure I can poison that Lori. Regardless, that's for something to think of as we go. And <laughs> we'll go ahead and draw another card. And we have a Gear Bug. Okay, we'll play the Gear Bug. That will uh, gift... To Vale. Vale's going to discard this kitten. Who needs a kitten? And he'll go ahead and draw the next card, and he has a chameleon. Awesome. We then have our penguin. I'm not going to do this because I really like the three cards left in our hand. They're all insects. We have a total of five charm that we can spend. Now, that isn't totally true yet because Vale is going to go. He's going to play his lunar oxaltal. He will allow... Uh, Luna to be able to discard a card. She's going to discard this ostrich because you can see the ostrich only gives us plus one movement. That's not really what we need. We need more attack. So we'll go ahead and draw another one for that. Oh, yes, another insect. We're then going to play this chameleon and then we're going to discard it to bring out the Komodo dragon in our discard pile. It's a level five, so we can do that. We then have the Shadow Mist Raptor. So what we get to do is destroy a card in the wilds. I'm going to destroy this Hiragon or Huron Stag. By doing that, we get to reveal the top card of our deck. If it's a Raptor, we get to draw it. Well, it's not going to be a Raptor we don't have anymore. But at least we know, hey, we've got the Kiln Salamander on top of our deck. We're then going to play our Spitter Lizard. That's great, but look at this. Our Blightwood Basilisk. We get to poison that Lori uh, because we have a Reptile in our discard or in play. So that's going to push Lori down to minus one. That also means that Luna can actually attack her. Sweet. We have a total of eight charm here. <laughs> vale has lots of money. And thanks to Vale, Luna now has six charm as well. So six charm and eight charm. First thing that happens, this Sawtooth Gator is going to come out into the wilds, and we're going to reveal a Death Head Ant. 
<laughs> yeah, so we're going to go ahead and burn this red mill moose for one of our six. We have five left. This death head ant, look at this, plus two for each insect augment. Uh, yeah, that's going to go into our discard pile. We'll place now a warborn mammoth, and we have another moose on top. For Veil, I think it's not even a question. We have to grab this Sawtooth Gator. We're going to do six so we can put it on top of our deck. So that gives us a total of two left. And we've got a Radiscar. Hmm, cool. I'm actually thinking of getting this Gear Bug. The only reason is because of the gift ability. I just don't know if it's going to clog my deck. But remember, I have that card that if I have an insect in my discard pile, I get to draw. This Gear Bug would be in my discard pile then. But the thing is, I don't know if I really want that in my deck. It really just doesn't fit. So let's go ahead and not do that. We've got two more money, or two more charm. We'll go ahead and burn this tiger so we can put out this Radisker. We'll go ahead and flip. Okay, we've got a griffin. So let's go ahead and get the, rid of the Radisker to put the griffin out. And our next one. Oh, look at that. Pin Eater Beetle. It's a mythical insect. Here are totally awesome creatures this round. <laughs> I love them. We've got Luna over here with a dual-winged cyborg awkward dual-winged scorpion-tailed legion wasp. And over here on Vale's side, we have a squirmy, slathering, raptor-toned, spitting blightwood basilisk. <laughs> we have for total attacks, this legion wasp is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 attack. <laughs> with one poison and four pushback and two additional movement. Over here, we have for the Blightwood Basilisk, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten attack, one additional movement, one poison, two range, actually two poison, and two range. Luna right now has a total of 14 attack. So the question is, do we go for the Lori and maybe take it out? But then I'm a little worried that Vale's not going to be able to do damage to that Varrier over here. But he'll get a magic, and what we could do with that magic is he could then run away using his sneak ability without taking a fatal wound. Uh, but, man, her Wasp right now is so strong. Do we go for the guy that's a 13 plus a D6? Oh, come on. Don't you guys think we go for the 13 plus the D6? Why the heck would we not? <laughs> so we've got three movement. We're going to go one, two. We're going to move right here. We can still attack by range, and then we're not also engaged with the um, Lori, so that way we don't take a fatal wound there. Right now, it's 14 to 13. This die roll is for Luna, and she gets a six. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That puts her at 20. Now, let's see what the Vire is at. And a 4. Oh, 13, 40, 50, 17. Oh, man. So we're only winning by 3. I am going to do it, you guys. I'm going to use this potion. I'd love to hit this guy for 2 points of damage. So we can destroy this to reroll any die. Come on. Be low, be low, be low. Yes! That puts him at 14 to our total of 20. We def uh, attacked him for 6 over what his base value is. He takes 2 points of damage. Not only that, we're going to poison him by one and push him four spaces away. We get to place one point of damage on him, but because we went over five what his total value was, which was 14, we get to place a second one. Now, technically, I could put Veil's magic on there, and I thought about it, but remember this one damaged effect? All heroes with damage on this creature take a wound. I didn't want both of them to take a wound, so just Luna will take one wound. And that's not a fatal wound. That's just a regular wound. We will, though, also poison him for one. And a four pushback. One, two, three, and he can't go anymore, so instead he loses two stamina. This is what you get for messing with the Legion Wasp. Now, if we had failed and he had attacked us, we would have been pushed by four. But since we won, that didn't happen. This means our Blightwood Basilisk now is going to have to try and take on that Lori. We've got 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We need at least a 2 or higher on a D6. That's totally doable, right? Yeah. Wow. Oh my gosh, is that 2 points of damage? You know what, you guys? We just took out the Lori. 6 plus the 10 is 16. She's at 11. We just did 2 points of damage to her. 
I honestly have to say I was not expecting that. <laughs> We're going to put both avails on there just because his is so useful with sneaking around. So we have a total of three damage on her now. We'll place all of that as active magic on him. And this minion is toast. Well, what looked to be a really bad round ended up being amazing. We were able to build some totally awesome creatures, kick some butt, and now the question is, I might try and slow myself down a little bit so we can get Karn out and hit him a couple times because the next chapter, he starts out on the board right away. That means we have six rounds at most to take him out. So let's go ahead and move ourselves back up to the move counter step. The only counter we need to move is the Vyre's counter. He'll go up to minus one. We'll reveal the next enemy AI card. And yeah, I was worried about that. Rage! Okay, so first Karn will move. Rage, so we'll increase the track of the Vyre and of Karn one time for movement towards priority two. Karn is now one space away, and Vyre is back up to minus one, the upper one. Remember how I said we were going to stall? One, two, three. Yeah, <laughs> they're not going to let us stall. That's okay. If we end up taking them out, I'll just have to try and kill Karn in six rounds next chapter. Let's go ahead and make Luna our first player again. I think that's the best idea. We can decide if she wants to attack or maybe Vale's going to sneak around. We'll see. We'll draw for Vale. She has one, two, three, four, five... Let's see, another puppy. Oh, yes, the dodo, a gear bug, the Acadian monkey, and the pike caterpillar. And then for Vale, he's got three here, plus two more from her, his discard pile. Oh, <laughs> two kittens. The first thing Luna will do is she'll play her Ar Arcadian monkey. She gets to look at the top two cards here and destroy one. Great. See a kitten. Yeah, okay, you may destroy one of them. Awesome. Then we'll go ahead and play our gear bug. That's going to allow Vale to discard the kitten that he just drew. And he'll draw another one. And we've got our chameleon. Then we'll play our big speed dodo. And that's going to go ahead and get rid of this wound. I love that. Then we'll play this pike caterpillar. You may discard this card to put a zero through three bird from your discard into your hand. Yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to put this ostrich into our hand because it allows us to draw a card. Oh, and we knew what we were getting, the crush, the crushapede. We have, of course, the crushapede and the puppy. Now, you may replace one of your cards in play with a card of equal cost or less from your discard. I think we're going to go ahead and replace this Arcadian monkey with the death head ant. <laughs> Why not? Luna will have a total of six money this round. The first thing Vale's going to do, he's going to play his Eldvar Chameleon, discard it so he can put out the Arcadian Monkey. That means he gets to reveal the top two cards of his deck and destroy one. And yeah, I'm going to get rid of the Fleetwood Frog. It's just not helping. I didn't have insects in my deck. Then we can go ahead and distract that minion. And we've got a Sawtooth Gator and then two wee little kittens. We have a total of seven charm for Vale this round. I think the first thing we'll do with our six charm is burn this Vanguard Griffin. We'll place out the Pain Eater Beetle. That's what we really want. <laughs> we'll reveal the next one. Oh my gosh, that's a mythical reptile. <laughs> okay, so our second one, we're going to burn this gear bug. We're not going to use that. We'll place out this Chartusaurus. Then we'll go ahead and reveal the next one. And we have a Skybreaker Rock. It's a mythical bird. We have four charm left. Let's go ahead and burn this red mill moose. So now we have three charm left. And our new advanced creature is a honey badger. We're going to burn this skybreaker rock. That means we have two charm left. This honey badger will come out. We then have another rock scorpion. Ooh. We'll spend that last one. Let's get rid of the honey badger. We're not going to be spending two or getting two wounds. <laughs> and we now have a Revenant Phoenix. With seven money for Veil, vale, I don't know why we wouldn't get the Chartoothosaurus. It's a reptile and it's mythical. <laughs> it looks awesome. That's going to our discard pile. And we have another Death Head Ant. Oh, we need to get that into Luna's deck. Luna has a crushing, peculiar, cyborg loyal fleet Death Head Ant. And Vale has a sawtooth, slippery Arcadian monkey. 
So this ant has three attack, plus two for five, two for seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen total attack, two pushback, and one additional movement. This monkey has four, five, six, seven, eight attack, and two pushback, and one additional movement. Just because of what I know of the next chapter, we have no treasure tokens. So I think we're going to spend one, two, three, four movement to pick up this treasure for Luna. And then Vale is simply going to spend one of his magic and move over by one space. Luna finds in that treasure spot the Scroll of Fury. Before a hero rolls a die in battle, destroy this card to give any hero plus two rage. Nice! Now, neither player battled, so I'm going to go ahead and put the Sawtooth Gator on top of Vale's deck and the Death Head Ant on top of Luna's deck. We're going to go ahead and end the round, and then our goal is maybe to hit Karn one time and also take out that minion so we can win the game. To start this round, Vire will go ahead and move up to zero. We'll draw the next enemy AI card, and we have Karn coming out. Each will move two, and we have to discard one Fatal Wound. We'll place Karn out on his temple. Now each are going to move two. So this minion will come here and engage Vale. Now here's the thing. I haven't talked much about these because they haven't really had any effect yet. But you see that wall? You can attack with flying over a wall. But what you cannot do is attack normally through the wall. So Karn will want to start getting closer to one of the two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Both of them, they're equal distance. So go towards player one. He'll move one, two, and then he would technically move two more that way, but that's all he can do. I really am kind of enjoying Luna being first player. Let's go ahead and do that again, because she'll have the option of either attacking Karn or attacking the minion. Luna will draw this round. One, two, three, four. Oh man, a kitten and a puppy. Ugh. And the final one, five. Ooh, a pin back dragonfly. And then Vale, one, two, three, four, five. He's going to draw couple puppies Ooh, that'll be nice and his sawtooth gator the first thing luna's gonna do is play her penguin she is not adjacent to a minion so she will discard her kitten and she gets to draw the top card of her deck and she has a gear bug awesome that's going to allow Vale to discard one of these puppies that he has and he will draw another card and he gets a spitter lizard we then just have a death head ant a puppy and a dragonfly I really want to get that mythical insect, but I'm just not getting enough charm. We only have one, two, three, four. I guess it makes sense. Insects probably don't have the best charm. <laughs> For Vale, the first thing he's going to do is play Lunar Ox Total. That will be a gift. We'll have Luna discard this puppy, and she will draw... Oh, a Bigsby Dodo! Awesome! And when she plays that, she can immediately destroy a card in her discard pile. So she's going to say sayonara to this kit. Vale has a total of six charm to spend this round. So apparently reptiles are more charming than insects. Hmm, I could agree with that. At six charm, I think we're actually going to get grab this Shadow Mist Raptor, and we're going to pay one additional to put it on top of our deck. Then we place out the Death's Head Ant, and we'll reveal the next card, and it's one of those honey badgers. Thanks to Vale, since we drew that Bigsby Dodo, we actually have six money to spend for Luna. So Luna will buy this Death Head Ant, spend one extra to put that on top of her deck. And the new one up here, ooh, a giant rasp fly. Cool looking insect. Luna has an awkward, peculiar, cyborg, dual winged Death Head Ant. And Vale has a squirmy, hyper, slathering, spitting, sawtooth gator. <laughs> so this Death Head Ant does three attack plus two plus two because of the augments so that's seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen total attack this gator here does plus two per reptile augment so we've got one two three reptile augments augments so its base attack is six and it gets plus one per non-basic augment that's not a basic that's not a basic that's not a basic so that's three so two four six seven eight nine 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 attack. <laughs> Luna's going to go ahead and try and attack the Vire. So she's going to move three. One, two, three. She's within one range. She's going to attack. Now they're both tied at 13, 13. So it's going to be a D6 roll off here. 
Now, I know a lot of you do not like dice resolution, and I don't technically have to do this. Don't forget I have that scroll of fury that I could use. Or heck, I can let Vale attack this minion. But I know treasures are sparse in the third chapter, so I'm taking a calculated risk. Luna does not have to take a fatal wound if she fails because she is fighting at range. So that's why, you know what? I'm just going to do it. So this is her roll. She rolled a four. Okay. I need to roll a three or less for the virus. Awesome, that's a one. <laughs> so that means we just took out that minion. When we do that, that means Luna is going to get a total of three active magic on her board. Now, you guys, here we have the Sawtooth Gator. Remember how I counted it up? It was like 16 attack. I did something wrong. And what's awesome is they have this card clarification sheet. So if ever you're not sure about a specific card, you can just look on the back side of the rules. Look at that. They've got not all of the cards, but most of them on here, which is super nice. So let's read what it says about the Sawtooth Gator. A reptile gives the gator only plus two attack. It does not give an additional plus one for being non-basic. So I would do only two, four, six, and I don't get any more with this. So seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we have a total of 13 for our base attack, not 16. Here's the thing. We're going to move ourselves adjacent to Karn. We're then going to use our venomous uh, ability to go ahead and poison him for one. So he's only at a 14. So all I have to do is roll a two or higher, and I'm going to do damage to him. This will be another D6 roll, and <laughs> we got a 2, just enough. So we attacked for 15, and he has a total of 14 as his base. Now, Karn works a little bit differently than your regular minion. What he does is instead of taking damage, you discard X cards from Karn's deck, and then you flip the top discarded card for a counterattack. So we did a total whopping 1 point of damage. We did distract him, so we get to put that down. And now what we need to do is reveal this card. You ready for this? Karn's counterattack. Karn bounds at an unaware hero, grows a spike clubbed tail, and swings it savagely. Karn moves adjacent to the next hero in turn order that has him battle. If all heroes have battled, Karn stays put. Okay, so he's not going to move. All heroes lose their passive abilities for the duration of this attack. Totally fine. Karn's tail does three wounds and two poison to all heroes within X spaces of Karn. X equals the amount of minions on the board. Any hero struck get knocked down. Lay them down. It takes one movement to stand up. <laughs> oh my gosh. So the nice thing is X is equal to the amount of minions on the board. There's no minions. X is zero. So I don't think that actually even hits anybody. Let me know if you disagree. But you know what the best part is? Then destroy this card. So we've just reduced his health a little bit because his health is essentially his deck of cards. And now this card is removed from the game. Since there are no minions on the board, we have won chapter two. Woohoo! Let's go ahead and move to chapter three. 